Hey YouTube, this is gonna be a quick rant on crappy amateur radio equipment. What you see here is a Workman SWR and uh, Watt meter. It uh, allegedly operates between 120 and 500 megahertz. It has several power settings. And uh, well, it created a little bit of a headache for me. I usually have this uh, SWR meter in line with my 2 meter band transceiver and my 2 meter station antenna and uh, a while back I, I started to notice problems and the problem was that the SWR wasn't constant it would vary quite a bit and uh, this issue started appearing after I moved my radios and the SWR meters uh, the SWR meter around a little bit uh, in my shack and uh, I would have real crazy SWR, um, like all of a sudden my antenna that used to work perfect on, on 2 meters would do absolutely nothing. It was almost like there was no antenna present whatsoever. Well after a while uh, I just did the obvious thing and uh, wiggle around contacts uh, like this. Uh, this here is the antenna connector and this is the connector that goes to the transceiver let's spin this around and I would just wiggle a little bit on them like this and I would notice that the SWR would jump up and down between perfect and absolutely horrible and I thought hmm this is weird I wonder why that's the case uh, so I opened it up and what I would expect of course is you see two screws right here well there's actually one screw missing I got it like this uh, I think I bought it at a flea market uh, or from a fellow ham, I don't remember where I got it. Anyhow, you would think that those are nicely bolted to the case and uh, that uh, this is having a pretty solid ground connection. But if you spin this around and uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that well enough. I think this one here will be best. Let's move the camera and let's see if we can do that in a single shot. Uh, Alright, almost there. Okay, here. If you look at this, back here, this is where your screw is coming through again, right here. This is this top screw from the connector. And you would think that they would neatly put some sort of nut on here, a uh, lock washer or anything like that. But no, they just put a solder blob on there. They, they really, let's see if the camera focuses on that a little better. Yeah, it does. Look at that. They put a solder blob on the screw. And this seems to be a normal, uh, you know, wood type screw. And uh, as you can see, the solder came loose. If I spin the screw around, <laughs> the PCB moves around. But this is crazy. The screw just moves in it. There's almost no connection. And uh, of course, I, I look through the rest of this and, and look at that. Those big solder blobs like this one down here. I don't know if you can see this well on camera, probably not so well, but this is absolutely dreadful. There you see another one of those. This is the center connector. They just, uh, I'm not sure if they were actually trying to solder or if they were welding. It, it really is, is not obvious from, from, from these connections. It's horrible and dreadful. So uh, obviously what I'll do is I'll remove those screws, remove those big solder blobs and uh, put actual uh, machine screws in here and uh, lock that all in place and use some ring terminals to get the connection to ground. Alright, just to compare what a good ground connection should or rather could look like, I opened up this LDG YT100. Uh, it's an automatic antenna tuner intended for use with I think the ASO FD857. It works with other radios as well. But uh, anyhow, you see the uh, uh, PL connectors here on the back. The first thing that you notice is this one actually has an external ground hookup. This is very important. On antenna tuners you usually see that, but I wish manufacturers would really implement an extra ground connection on any piece of equipment. Really, uh, I'm the kind of person that loves grounding uh, the ham shack completely and running a ground from every device to a central ground point. This is just great. But going back to our PL connectors, if you turn this around again, uh, you see up here, you see that they actually bolted this on here. Uh, they have uh, ring terminals right here. 
and a little piece of wire that goes onto the PCB. You see the ground plane here, you see a little bit of via stitching here around the edges and uh, even though you have a little bit of inductance here, it really doesn't matter. Uh, we're talking about HF here. This tuna, I don't know if it does 6 meters too, but uh, so its uh, top frequency will be around 30 megahertz. So if it does 6 meter, it's going to be around 54 megahertz. Uh, that's not enough to uh, really create a problem here with, with these uh, ground leads. Um, you can't complain about this at all. This is a great example on how to do it. The only thing, the only way to improve this even more is to actually take the second pin and also connect it to ground. Um, but uh, it should be fine the way it is. All right, well, we have this thing open. I thought we'd have a look at this. Um, I won't review this or comment much on it, but uh, it's always interesting to have a look inside these antenna tuners. And you can very quickly see that uh, they actually cared about quality here. You see a uh, brand name relays up here, down here, those are all brand names. Um, you uh, see a very neatly uh, that they actually put in some uh, some glue, this looks like hot glue, to make sure that those inductors can't move. You know, they're, they're rock solid in there and won't change the characteristics if you move this around. Um, they took great effort in making this PCB look nice. It's a very nice routing. Uh, we're using Silva uh, Mica capacitors right here. They are high quality. They're, they're pretty expensive because of that, but they are very stable. Their temperature coefficient is, is pretty stable and very predictable. And what you can do, and I'm absolutely certain that's what they did here, you can make sure that uh, this side has a temperature coefficient opposite to what uh, your inductors have over here. Or depending on how your circuit actually goes, you have the same temperature coefficient and they cancel each other out. Um, that depends on how you put those two together. Now how an antenna tuner like this works is pretty simple. You have a little SWR bridge up here that determines the SWR and uh, then this uh, microprocessor down here is probably a PIC microcontroller um, I mean let's look under the label I bet it's a PIC let's see uh, sure enough it's a it's a PIC microcontroller uh, can't read very well upside down but it's a PIC uh, microchip microprocessor here um, now anyway this microprocessor switches through your inductors and your capacitors and basically tries to achieve the lowest SWR um, it basically works by try and error it really just tries all combination and sees what happens and uh, on most of those tuners these uh, microcontrollers actually store um, the combination for a certain frequency so the next time you switch back to the same frequency or a similar frequency the microcontroller knows where to start because in an ideal world your antenna won't change uh, in a real world it does of course depending on weather and uh, external factors like that but uh, the effect isn't that big that it really matters a whole lot so this is the best starting point for the microcontroller and they can lock in much quicker on best, best SWR Okay, that was it. Quick overview of this uh, LDG YT100 antenna tuner. And uh, like I said, this one right here, if you have one of those, the uh, Workman SX144-430. It's, I mean, it works nice. I haven't checked how reliable it is, but uh, as far as the grounding and the connections are concerned, uh, this is complete and utter garbage. So if you have one of those, do yourself a favor, open it up remove those uh, solder points, put in some some real machine screws and especially here with the PCB, don't just put put something on top of here uh, put in a machine screw, put in a nut over here, put in a spacer put a nut on top of here with a washer in between uh, and uh, one of those ring terminals like used here in this LDG to get a ground connection now you don't have to actually put on some sort of lead because you just want to get on this, P uh, on this uh, PCB directly um, but you probably want to implement some sort of ground connection to the case as well uh, I don't think there's a very well a very good ground connection from the connector to the case there may actually be none at all because I don't see an extra connection or hookup for that so that's another thing you may want to implement for shielding purposes so just just to have you know it can't hurt um, but like I said this is absolutely horrible and if you have one of those uh, throw it away or improve it one of those two 
All right, that's enough for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel. There'll be much more videos to come. My uh, frequency of uh, posting videos in the year 2013 has been rather low. And uh, it was one of my New Year's resolutions to provide at least two videos a month in 2014. So uh, give me a thumbs up, like this video, subscribe to my channel and uh, enjoy the, the many many more videos to come. Thanks, see you next time.